welcome to a mid B covers hot D episode eight. House of the Dragon episode eight opens on Driftmark again, where Princess Rhaenys, Lady Bela Targaryen, Daemon's daughter, and Lord Vaemond Valerian, Lord Corlys's brother, receive news that Lord Corlys has fallen ill after sustaining a wound in an ambush. It should be noted that episode eight does take place at least four or five years in the future. Lord Vaemond Valerian is convinced that his brother is on his way out, and he intends to take the driftwood throne for himself. Bela isn't having it, but Vaemon insists he's the closest male kin to his brother, Lord Corlys. Rainey says that he's skirting treason by implying that Lucerys is a bastard and he ought to be careful. It's notable that Rainey stands by Lord Corlys's desire to pass the driftwood throne through Laenor's line, even though we know that in private she disagreed with the decision and sought to supplant Rhaenyra's children with Bela and Reyna. So many Reynas. But Vaemon says that while he would enjoy having Rhaenys support in the matter of the Driftwood succession, he doesn't need her support. They both know that though Viserys is still technically king, it is now a queen atop the Iron Throne in reality. And that queen is Alicent. We head over to Dragonstone where Daemon is gathering eggs from Cyrax's latest dropping, I guess? Ooh. He's interrupted with an urgent message from his daughter Bela at Driftmark, who is giving her dad a heads up that Lord Vaemon Valerian is traveling to King's Landing to challenge Lucerys' right to succession of the Driftmark throne. Jaceres has turned into an adorable nerd with the worst haircut in the history of Game of Thrones, I think. He's studying Valerian in the Great Hall at Dragonstone when Daemon and Rhaenyra interrupt him and clear the hall so they can talk in private. Daemon refers to Rhaenys' belief that Rhaenyra and himself were involved in Laner's death as a mere disagreement, to which Rhaenyra and I disagree forcefully. I'd say that's more than a disagreement. But Damon insists that Rhaenys is reasonable and will not hold this belief against them in the proceedings to decide the Driftmark succession. Sure. <laughs> Why not? When Rhaenyra, Daemon, and their various children from their various marriages arrive in King's Landing by boat, they're greeted by silence. Like, basically nothing. Complete crickets. They're also greeted with a bunch of newly acquired stars of the seven that have replaced the Targaryen sigil throughout the halls. At the concurrent small council meeting, we see that Alicent is acting in Viserys' name, but it's really Otto pulling the strings. We can deduce this based on her reaction to Otto's glee at Rhaenyra and Daemon's embarrassing arrival. He claims he was just giving them a greeting fit for their station, which is <laughs> the matter of Driftmark succession comes up at the small council meeting, but only the maester and master of coin, Lord Beesbury, maintain Lucerys' right to succession of Driftmark. The rest of the small council has been stuffed with sycophants, loyal to the high towers. Alicent excuses herself ostensibly to go visit with Rhaenyra, but is interrupted by a knight who informs her that there is a delicate situation in Aegon's apartment that demands her attention. Rhaenyra and Daemon visit Viserys, who is bedbound and very sick in his chambers. Rhaenyra is heartbroken at the sight, and in fairness, so is Damon, but he just can't help himself from immediately getting down to business and starts pitching the need for Viserys to reinforce Lucerys' claim to Driftmark. Rhaenyra shrugs all that business off, seeing that her father is in no state to deal with any of that. Instead, she introduces her father to his newest grandchildren, Aegon, very confusing, and Viserys, named after him. Also, what did I say about Damon's political juice never missing? Huh? Eh? We see that Rhaenyra has come to appreciate familial pleasures in the same way that her father has, not in the Targaryen way. I'd like to rephrase that. Rhaenyra has become like a family girl, the same way her dad was like a family man, like all of these burdens. She just takes pleasure in being a great mom and protecting her kids, and she loves seeing Viserys light up when he's proud of his family or proud of her. Damon and Rhaenyra discover that Viserys is drugged up on a ton of milk of the poppy, essentially an opioid in liquid form. I'll take Damon's word that the amount was in excess, because I feel like he would know. Viserys refers to the mixture as tea, which suggests that he might not actually know what he's drinking. So one of Allison's handmaids, the one that made a whole show of noticing Laris and Allison together that one time and a couple episodes ago, do you remember? Well, she delivers this girl servant, Diana, 
to Allison's chambers. We then hear the harrowing tale of her sexual assault at the hands of Allison's son, Aegon. At first, Allison comforts the girl, Diana, and she even goes as far to tell Diana that she believes it wasn't Diana's fault. But then Allison skillfully pivots, using this newfound trust to victim blame, telling Diana that her story is too unbelievable for everyone else. And you know what they say about girls that find themselves in situations like that. I mean, even if she, the queen, believed Diana would never put herself in that position, what will other people think? She makes Diana believe that it's in Diana's best interest to keep quiet about the whole thing, and honestly, it, it probably is. Allison gives Diana a bag of gold before her handmaiden returns with moon tea. It's implied that Diana is not gonna leave that room without making sure she drinks every last drop. This should prevent the conception of a bastard, but it doesn't make it easier for Allison to do, I, I guess. After this, she goes to confront her son Aegon with the same ferocity she did when she found him masturbating out a window. I'd wager that she ought to decipher by now that this is not a winning strategy. She begs him to stop, she slaps him, and she tells him, you are no son of mine. And he plays the old, I didn't ask for any of this, spoiled brat card, blah blah blah. Helena interrupts them, asking after Diana, who seemed to be responsible for the children. What children, you ask? Aegon and Helena's children. Gross. After confronting Aegon, Alicent finally attends to Damon and Rhaenyra in Viserys' chambers. Rhaenyra basically accuses Alicent of drugging her father so that Alicent can act and rule in his name. But Alicent insists that no, she's not ruling. She and her father, Otto Hightower, are just acting as Viserys' will and wisdom while he cannot function properly. I don't know how that's different, babe, but... <laughs> Okay. Rhaenyra asks then who will determine the fate of her son's inheritance on the morrow? To which Alicent deftly replies that it will be herself, of course. <laughs> Rhaenyra needn't worry. She will follow the father's just guidance and surely forget all of those slanderous accusations Rhaenyra just hurled at her in that room. I think that's a pretty good indicator that she will not forget those accusations that Rhaenyra just hurled at her in that room. Jason Lucere spectate a sparring match between Aemond and Sir Criston Cole in the training yard. Aemond has outpaced Sir Criston to an embarrassing degree. Everyone gawks and stares at the strong boys because they're obviously strong boys, but Jace reminds Lucerys that even if people stare, even if people talk, that doesn't change what he is. They're interrupted by Vaemon Valerian's procession, who glares menacingly at these children he's competing against. Ah! Alison's positioning in the scene with herself, Faymond, and her father, Otto, to discuss Driftmark puts her almost like literally within like a jail cell. We see her through the bars of a chair, and it's so obvious she feels so trapped by her father's ambition and her sense of duty. Faymond and Otto are engaging in obvious quid pro quos right in front of Alison's face, and the only way she can justify it is by telling herself that it's for the good of the people. Otherwise, it seems like this would be diametrically opposed to this morality she's developed somehow. Of course it's good to avoid war, and Otto plucks on this nerve of Alicent's whenever he gets the chance, but the truth is, the war that he's referring to often is not war with the triarchy. The potential war he's talking about is the war that he himself helped instigate, the war of succession that's to come. Reyna and Rhaenyra visit Rhaenys, say that three times fast, at the Godswood. Rhaenyra initially tries to butter Rhaenys up, and then she pivots to accusing Rhaenys of coming to try to steal Driftmark for herself, I guess. Rhaenyra tries to convince Rhaenys that she had nothing to do with Laenor's death, that she loved Laenor, but Rhaenys is having a difficult time buying this. Rhaenyra then goes for broke, offering both of her sons for betrothal to Lena's girls. That would make Bela the Queen of Westeros one day, and Reyna, Lady of Driftmark. Rainy says that this offer is either really generous or really desperate, but Rhaenyra says, what does the difference matter? But Rainy says that once Lucerys' claim is struck down, and it will be struck down as far as she's concerned, Rainy is gonna stand alone once again. Backing Rhaenyra at this juncture would just mean that the High Towers would come for her too. Rhaenyra visits her father in the night, begging for clarity regarding his wishes, regarding Aegon's dream. She asks him, what are they protecting the kingdom from? Is it worth tearing apart the realm? She begs him to support her claim, her son's claim. It's a desperate plea, more for herself than for Viserys. The next morning, Viserys is being treated by the maesters. Even though Otto tries to write him off as senile, Viserys insists he wants to host supper that evening while his family is gathered, all at the Red Keep. Then, Otto tries to 
push milk of the poppy on Viserys, and Viserys refuses. At the proceedings for Driftmark's succession, Otto initially takes the throne to speak on Viserys' behalf. Famed Valerian makes an impassioned plea for Driftmark, pointing to his true blood, and Rhaenyra interrupts him to point out that if he had so much fidelity for true blood, then he would support her son's claim, would he not? You can see Allison is increasingly disturbed watching Rhaenyra hold steadfast, protecting her children. Imagine watching your sons insulted in front of you like that. Okay, somebody needs to put a leash on Aemon and that one eye. He gets too much done with it. It is too effective. When it's finally Rhaenyra's turn to speak, the great hall doors spill open and in comes Viserys wearing this dope half mask to cover the rotted side of his face. He hobbles his way up to the Iron Throne and he's, he's so good, he's got it all by himself, but he does struggle and lose his crown as he's making his way up the top steps only for Damon to come pick up his crown and help him to the tippy top. He says he's gonna sit the throne today, dude. This clearly was not something anyone expected, but I think his family being there, not taking milk of the poppy, gave him this second wind. When Rhaenyra and Viserys make eye contact, you can see that he did hear her the night before. Ah! Also, a shout out to the music in this scene, which illustrates Viserys' journey to the top of the throne beautifully. It's incredible. Just a gorgeous encapsulation of his struggle and his tenacity. It is perfect. Viserys plays dumb as to the reason why the proceedings are occurring at all, saying that the matter of succession is settled. But if anyone had the authority to speak as Lord Corliss's wife, he defers to Princess Rhaenys. And she says he would desire Lucerys to act as his heir and take Driftmark after his death. She also takes this opportunity to announce Bela and Reyna's betrothal to Rhaenyra's boys. Viserys then says the matter is settled. Again. Faymond, however, disagrees. He, in fact, loses it and screams the word bastard right in Lucerys's face, and then he calls Rhaenyra a whore. In all fairness, Damon had been basically daring him to do it. Just as Viserys gets up with his dagger in hand, intent on cutting out Damon's tongue himself because he's the baddest bitch in the land, Damon comes up from behind and slices Damon's head right in half. Damon loves this scene to a disturbing degree. Rhaenys watches the silent sisters embalm Vaymond in lieu of attending the supper with Viserys. Her line here, that the stranger in the faith of the seven doesn't care whether her eyes are closed or open, just heartbreaking. At supper, the greens and the blacks predictably sit divided. It's an adorable scene for a while. Viserys begs his family to make amends and also to see him as something beyond a king, to see him not just as a tool for their ends, but as a husband and a father. Aegon prods newly betrothed Jace and Bela throughout the night, prodding them with disgusting remarks at every opportunity that someone, maybe his mother, should have put a stop to, but oh well. <laughs> Otto doesn't sip when Lucerius is toasted, I'm just saying. When Viserys takes off his gold mask, the rotted holes, his empty eye socket, those parts of his flesh are on the green side. Notably, the fresh skin, his working eye, are on the side where Rhaenyra and Daemon sit. All episode were fed suggestions that Viserys' greatest mistake was allowing Rhaenyra and Daemon to slip away and for Otto's ambitions to take their stead. He knows he's going to die soon. I love when Rhaenyra gives an impromptu speech in any episode because she always looks pissed before she gives it or like really solemn and determined. You think they're gonna be like a totally different thing and then she gets up and gives them and they're super emotional bangers with a ton of heart and compliments. Like Rhaenyra uses her speech to appreciate the devotion Alicent has for Viserys as a dutiful wife. She says that Alicent for this has her gratitude and her apology. Alicent is so deeply moved by this. It's so rare that she hears a kind word out of a mouth that means it. She then returns the speech in kind, raising her cup to Rhaenyra as a mother and as a great future queen. This comes as a surprise to Otto. And then they party. When Aegon refuses to let up on teasing Bela and Jace, Jace almost loses his temper and slams his fist on the table. But then Aemon stands too. And everything goes quiet. The fear is palpable. Why doesn't Alicent tell Aemon to sit down? Why doesn't she tell Aegon to shut up? 
I'm honestly desperate to hear about Eamon's antics in the time between he lost the eye and now. Because it seems like he's been cultivating an air of fear with all of his behaviors, but we don't know any of those behaviors other than him barely blinking. Anyway, Jace gamely pivots to complimenting Aegon in a way that forces Aegon to play ball. Helena is murmuring something about the beast beneath the boards, and then she takes it upon herself to give a speech. It's very sweet, but it is also pretty humiliating for Aegon. And it's humiliating without even meaning to. Brilliant. Jace asks Helena for a dance to bother Aegon. Otto does this tiny little clapping thing, which is the closest he'll ever look to adorable. And you can tell Viserys is truly happy. This has always been his end game, to have his family all around him and happy with each other. But he's struggling and he's taken to his chambers just as the roast pig arrives. After Viserys is gone though, it's open season for Aemond. He decides to take a stab at the speech thing, which seems really sweet at first. In all fairness, Lucerys was kind of being a little weirdo staring at him, but that's just what kids do. I guess I would feel differently if the kid in question took my eye out, but what, you know, I wasn't there. Aemond was just looking for an excuse to pop off all night. Allison needs to act like the mom everyone congratulates her on being, but oh well, here we go, buckle up. Aemond's whole speech revolves around congratulating Jaceres and Lucerys for being healthy, handsome, and strong. So Jace punches Aemond and is quickly restrained by the King's Guard. Then Aegon takes the opportunity to manhandle a child like five years at least his junior. Seems like a pretty Aegon thing to do. Aemond is intent on making good with the strong boys from that eyeball incident a couple years back. But Damon makes it clear that if Aemond has any intentions of doing that, he's gonna have to go through Damon first. Also, I'm so, so I think sometimes I say Damon instead of Damon, especially after I say Aemond and I can do a thousand takes of this or we can all just collectively pretend that I didn't because we all know they're the same letters whatever you don't get it so yeah Eamon backs down Allison is clearly apologetic but Rhaenyra is rightfully disturbed everyone knows Allison is not doing nearly enough to curb her abusive children Allison kind of acts like everything's all water under the bridge despite the violent incident that just took place in front of them and she pleads with Rhaenyra to stay Rhaenyra finally concedes that she'll escort the children and Damon back home but return to King's Landing on Dragonback Allison says that both herself and the king would be very, very glad for that. Now with the burden of her father's ambition off of her, ostensibly for now at least, and her children safe, it seems like Allison can breathe a little and she really just wants a friend to confide in, someone that gets it. And Rhaenyra really is the closest thing to someone that gets it, probably. Other than Rhaenys. Otto is visibly disturbed by his daughter's newfound camaraderie with Rhaenyra. Remember Missaria, Madame turned mistress of secrets? So she receives the handmaiden at her house, the one that had delivered Diana to Allison earlier that day in the moon tea and all that. Miss Aria's like, oh, it was a busy day at the castle, wasn't it? And she's like, yes, my lady. Ah! Look, I'm no capitalist, but I love to see a woman in business succeed. A self-made woman in business succeeding, can't knock it. Allison goes to Viserys in the night. He's incoherent and babbling about Aegon's dream, answering the question he remembers Rhaenyra asking him in his sleep or half coherent state the previous evening. What Allison hears is the name Aegon, the name of their son, Prince Aegon. She mistakes this for Viserys recanting his support for Rhaenyra's succession. She immediately just in internalizes this as a sign. I have to say, I don't like that a position that took her this long to sway on at all, it just like happens in an instant. She's back on that horse. Like it's literally that easy, like with this smart accomplished woman who has been running a kingdom. I don't believe that. Viserys then dies in Alicent's absence and he dies calling out for his love, Queen Emma. His absence in the show surely will be felt. Viserys and Damon have been steadfast, so is Rainey and they've all been great, but like Patty is really, he's been holding it down. So it's good to see him go out in a fashion that really celebrates his performance. Anyway, I will see you next week for episode nine of House of the Dragon. Bye-bye.